Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to A House of Many Doors. Now, last episode, we went to Clayton's Mill, met a lovely lady, Stymphalia, and uh, were promptly threatened with a six-barreled shotgun. So, I say it's time to leave. Also, I went through the interface and figured out, hey, this place has shops that refuse to buy anything or sell anything that I want. So, more reasons to leave. Oh. Oh, yes, I have to choose directions. And I don't really have much of a map. Um, I don't know where to go. Uh, return, for one thing. Um, east, the city of Keys. Go far enough and you'll find Ghoul Watch. Okay. North, long way south, the... You'll find the Fortress of the Poet Knights. Okay. We're going south. Because the Poet Knights, they were one of the, um... Little bits of story that I got when I was, you know, looking through news on this game. I was like, ah, the Poet Knights. Well, this has to be something interesting. And they sound very, very peculiar, shall we say. Uh, what's this about a ruined pub? A tavern from another world. Its roof is caved in, its floor kicked in dust. The bar is tragically empty. The bartender still stan stands, sits behind the bar, rather. A skeleton with only a few scraps of flesh still clinging between its ribs. Search for a drink. Oh my, why would you do this? You search for hours, but there's nothing but broken glass. Best move on. Nothing for us here. But yes, the Poet Knights. Okay, is that a recurring thing? Because that's really going to be annoying if it is. It's going to get me. It's going to be upsetting. Anyhow. A swirl of pale moths. Whoa, what? We're definitely near the City of Engines now. Um, City of Engines down to the right. Okay. But yes, Poet Knights. The only description I've heard of them says that they can kill with a single stanza. Which, uh, I'm curious about. And you know what? I'm also curious how these things do in combat. So, we're fighting. Deserters. Desperate folk indeed. All that waits them at home is a brisk interrogation and a hanging. And they know it. They want your money, and they want your fuel. Um... Hmm. Refuse. They were angry at the world in general. Now they're angry at you in particular. Ah! The combat song. Isn't it delightful? Your crew can gain wounds or even die. Yes, I'm aware of that. Combat's turn-based. Now, want to test something? Because there have been a lot of patches for this game since release. And since the little beta version I got to test out. So I'm wondering, yep, you can still use up all your actions by just aiming weapons. A single weapon, rather. Hmm. Not exactly impressed, but also not something... Ooh. The question, what is that, by the way? Ready for the miss. But yes, what am I shooting at right here now? I can end my turn. Yeah, moving crew takes up actions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that information. I needed it. Okay, it's on fire now. Good. Oh, they managed to do some damage themselves, but even that is itself fine. Uh, yeah, just end the turn. A little anxious. I think we got this? Possibly. They've got slightly more health than I do, and they're a little bit more sane as well. Both of which are disadvantages. Hmm. Do they have more... I'm debating whether boarding them might be a good idea, and it might be. But we'll see. We shall see. They're not doing anything to close the distance either, which is kind of... So, oh, wait, they are. Oop, I just turned out the light on them. They're fucked. Of course, we might die here because I don't got much in the way of, you know, health. But, hey. That's probably fine. Where's my doctor? Doctor! Heal these men, please. Try to, at least. I mean, he's just a swabby. I don't really particularly care about him, but at the same time, it would be nice if he lived. 
Oh, I should shoot at the gun because I'm... Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, well, that thing's gone, whatever that was. Okay, we got ourselves a problem, boys. Um, hmm. Yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, who is my engineer? Engineer, please, engineer. You're a gunner, that's fine. You, get over here, repair that thing. I need the light, for reasons. Also, my god, this might have been a bad choice. Going with it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, do damage. More damage to that. Still gonna get a hit in, which sucks. But they're also broken. Tell me I can flee. Oh, I might be dead. I might be dead. I might have been a dumb and died in the second episode. Okay, just keep retreating. Flee. Haha. <laughs> your highlight has been doused and your kinetopede slams into lurching, scrabbling movement. You skitter into the darkness before your enemy can react. Good. We are nearly dead. Oh. My. No. There was a thing here. Yep. Can't tell me there wasn't. Turn the heart light on, please. Do it now. Do it now. Uh-huh. Thank you. I'm aware of that. Thank you. Come on, get it back on, get it back on. Thank you. Okay, so City of Engines is still down to the right. Okay, let's start going rightwards. Okay, because I want to get to the City of Engines, because I'm hoping... Yep. Definitely near. What is with those? Also, those bats seem to have stars on them. There's Badach's gaze. Okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, I should probably actually chat with the crew as well. Just as a side note of things I should do. Strange glowing vapors trail in our wake. Yep, not gonna worry about that. A dilapidated church. A church from another world, its spire is sagging, its steeple fallen in. Candle stubs and damp rotted holy books scatter the floor inside. Scattered on the floor inside. You wonder if it was stolen on a holy day. Perhaps an entire congregation was devoured by the dark. You find a rough stone tablet sitting on a lectern. It's carved with runes that seem to subtly crawl atop the granite. Order it taken back to your kinetopede. It looks like it could be valuable, but your crew murdered about a curse, and they weren't right the first time, right? Ha 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 ha. Huh. The stone tablet feels oddly warm to the touch. We got a cryptoglyphic tablet. Let's just keep on scuttling. Curses what curses? Huh? Exhaustion. You slave over your journals and notes, scraps of poetry, places you've been, people you've met. You fall asleep at your desk, tormented. You dream of trees. Oh! A dream of trees. Tonight you dream of gold leaf trees. Boughs that drip sparking filigree. Blue skies above and grass underfoot. Shining fruit so bright you mustn't look long. You've never seen something so beautiful. An unfortunate place to find a corpse. She is hanging impaled by eight spears. Blood-crusted hair hides her face, and the tree behind is splattered red. As you step closer to examine her, she lifts her clouded eyes to meet yours. Finally, she says, a smile quirks the corner of her decayed lips. The years turn, we meet again. Nice to meet you, Persephone. Uh, I have several questions about that one. Uh, are you dead? I'm not dead, says Persephone. She lifts one hand carefully and brushes some of the hair from her face. Blood drips. I'm not exactly living a life of comfort, however. She pauses, grimacing, to pull at one of the spears lodged through her. It does not budge. You're seeking a way to escape the house, and I know how. But in return, you have to help me. How can I do that? Come and find me, says Persephone. Take me down from here. I want to escape just like you. And I can help if you just free me from these damned spears. The fruits around her head are glowing like miniature suns. 
Where? Her words are becoming more difficult to hear as though she is speaking across a yawning abyss. The orchard, she says. This is where, but the rest is inaudible. The light burns your eyes. You look away. Persephone is a simmering, a shimmering silhouette. Who are you exactly? I am the ninth of the nine, she says. The lookout. I am the one left behind. The blaze of the tree is extraordinary. You close your eyes, but can still see the light through your eyelids, each capillary highlighted in gold. The world begins to dissolve in light. We will meet again, she promises, that the light as the light of a thousand stars strips you to the bone. When you understand more, keep exploring, keep writing, learn and grow and dream of me again. You wake in bed, the sheets drenched in sweat. Your eyes still hurt. Intriguing. So I should really be paying attention to these things. At a cost of 50 apprehensions. Ah! I see, a peaceful sleep for once. I see how we do things here. I'm gonna leave you guys for later, though. No, no, no. None of that. Away. Peaceful sleep for once. Uh, right and down. I suppose I could explore more of these rooms. Excuse me, did it just say she was a female ghoul? One of my crew members is a... I mean... Eh, you know what, I'm fine. I shouldn't judge. I have a car char as well. Which apparently is a sentient shark. So, I mean, really. What am I complaining about? I mean, really. Besides the state of my kinetopede, which really does need to be addressed sooner rather than later. Hmm, south and to the right, or right over here. And what do we got? What do we got? An abandoned cottage. Rickety old house from another world dropped into this much larger house without ceremony. Its ceiling's fallen in and rats scatter from the rubble as you approach. There's someone alive in there? Get away, get away. Crouched in one corner of the cottage is a scrawny man, bearded and unkempt. He stares at you with wide eyes like a startled child and aims a rifle at you with trembling hands. This must be a visitant, snatched from another world and crawled inside here for shelter from the dark. How did you get here? What kind of world was he taken from? In a croaking whisper, the visitant tells you how he was conscripted into a war against the things from the skies. A missile was descending upon his platoon, then everything went black and he found himself here. Now I'm dead and in hell, he says. I know it to be true. You won't trick me, demon. He waves his rifle. Huh. A test of spirit. Persuade him to join your crew. If he stays out here, he'll be dead within days. I am shocked that that actually worked. After much gentle cajoling, the visitant finally puts down his rifle. He agrees to join your crew. He doesn't have any better options after all. Um, I guess a new gunner. I don't know what any of these positions do, though. So, you know, there is that to consider. The visitant snaps off a smart salute and shoulders his rifle. Welcome to the crew. He glares at your kinetopede in wonder. Uh-huh. So, there's an enemy there, but we're near... The city of keys, not keys, engines. Uh, yeah, we'll be fine. Hopefully I can repair my kinetopede because, my god, is it damaged for some reason. Can't imagine why. Certainly couldn't be anything I caused to happen. Oh, it appears the city is an engine of some kind. Clockwork city. Interesting. A city of moving metal. The air swarms with flying machines. And below them, the city turns on colossal groaning cogs. Beyond the bustle and the madness, Tarwater Bay lurks, black and still as volcanic stone. Hen Here the impossible is routine, and even the house's tenuous laws of reality are completely suspended, provided that you build a good enough machine to suspend them. Intriguing, very intriguing. Repair our hull, it's gonna cost me half my money, but okay. You can have your engineers help out, but it'll still cost you. Your engineers help with the repairs, hopefully speeding the process along. It's still an agonizing wait. Spent three days having your kinetopede fixed up. Eh. Unfortunate, that. Hmm. So, I actually checked this out. That bizarre effigy is something that I have. It's a strange idol of an incomprehensible god. Is it in another world? Is it dead? Or is it in the house and observing us right now? I'm sorry, what? 
The young man lies in a mound of rust, oily black waves lapping at his feet. When you check his pulse, you find he's still alive, though only barely. Tarwater Bay is manned and fortified. The beach sprawls with barbed wire. Searchlights sweep the waves every few seconds. One beam of light lands on you and the half-drowned man, and immediately, a bright figure detaches from the nearest sentry tower and flies down to investigate you. Oi, it's one of the city's rocket men now hovering above you and spewing fire from his misshapen metal legs. He's holding a rifle in his hands. Did this fellow wash up from the tar water? Yes. The rocket man frowns, swaying back and forth as he wrestles for control over his unruly rocket legs. Nothing good comes from Tarwater Bay, he says. Trash shamblers, technic squid, and other half-machine abominations. Never heard of a man washing up. He glances at the supine figure in the rust. Um... I guess we're deciding if he lives or not. Yes, he was alive. Well, we'll need to question him. The rocket man descends to the floor. The flames from his legs dying to embers. Find out why he was here in the first place. If he's been working with the abominations neath the water, we'll make him fucking well regret it. If the half-drowned man doesn't have a good excuse, he's in deep trouble. The City of Engines has a well-founded paranoia about anything that emerges from the tar water. I mean, I guess we do the test with spirit. This is just some innocent half-drowned soul. He isn't worth your time. Man, I'm just passing all these spirit challenges. Fantastic. The rocket man waves his hands irritably. Yeah, you're probably right, he says. This poor bugger probably just got too close to the shore and had a lucky escape. Why don't you take him to a doctor? I don't have time to babysit civilians. A roar, a burst of foul black smoke, and the rocket man blasts away. You're left alone with the half-drowned man. <laughs> I could just leave him there after all that. No, no, we're picking him up and carrying him back to the Kinetopede. Hopefully he'll recover by the time you get back. Back at the Kinetopede, Rutherford is forced to administer several blows to the ribs and a good dose of smelling salts before the half-drowned man finally awakes. He immediately sp spews a great volume of oily salt water across the floor of the surgery. To terribly sorry, apologizes the drowned man immediately, wiping the oil and vomit from his moustache. Oh, oh dear, what happened? Did we build it? Uh, build what? Nothing, says Dr. Delgado brightly. I was a tad confused as all, this is my first time above the waves. He takes a great gulp of air. The oxygen here is delicious. You can really tell it hasn't been recycled. Okay, who are you? Dr. Henry Delgado at your service. The mustachioed man shakes your hand damply, some color returning to his cheeks. Engineer, inventor, and minister for demonic schemes. So many questions right there. Explain how we found him. He listens, stroking his mustache theatrically. I see. Well, thank you for pulling me out of the clutches of that nosy rocket man. You certainly saved my bacon there, so you did. Ever since I first came to the house, I've lived beneath the waves of the bay. Why have you done that? Now I've been forced from my home, and I don't know how to return. A troubled situation for old Dr. Delgado, wouldn't you say? <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do? Huh. Perhaps there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Perhaps my old pal, er, what's your name? You tell him. Perhaps my old pal Brian Bright can help me out once more. I'm a master scientist, able to shape technology with the slightest whim or thought. Let me join your crew as a chief engineer. I will single-handedly revolutionize your engine before I work out a way to return beneath the waves. I mean, the man's insane, but god damn it, that's the kind of thing I need. Plus two relationship to Dr. Henry Delgado. Wonderful. Excellent, excellent. Dr. Delgado claps his hands together and laughs. I cannot wait to investigate your engine. Ah, I wonder what strange new technologies await me here above the water. Now, if you excuse me, I need to vomit another six liters or so of water. Dr. Delgado retreats to his new quarters, slamming his fist into his chest. Well, I don't know what triggered that. I think I might have accidentally hit something between scenes, but that's interesting, to say the least. A gather news, the streets are a cacophony of competing voices, mechanical, telepathic, human. The problem isn't finding news, it's sorting the vaguely legitimate sounding from the outright lies. After the 17th day of torrential rain, angry mobs have gathered outside the offices of the weather engineers. Anthroperions have launched a new machine-only machine only hover cog. half working services are further deregulated amidst controversy. Of course, well well, the city turns. I mean, obviously I have to wander the streets. The city is a self-perpetuating machine, endlessly turning, endlessly producing machinery. 
There's more to see here than you could manage in one lifetime. The tar water is seldom tranquil. Today you are fortunate enough to be nearby during one of its assaults. You stand on the edge of a hovercog amongst a gawking crowd of humans and half-mechanicals, watching as far below, a tide of hideous metal rises from the ink-black sea and crashes down upon the waiting soldiery. This is a well-practiced dance. The soldiers will drive the sentient machinery back into the polluted sea, or, less likely, the machines will overwhelm all before them and rampage through the streets, killing hundreds. For hours, the air trembles, shrapnel flies, even up on the hovercog you can hear the screams, screaming metal, screaming people, explosions so bright they blind. When your eyes recover, you realize that the jagged machine army is withdrawing, slipping once more beneath the oil slick waves. I mean, obviously, survey the wreckage. I mean, don't get me wrong, I could interview these surviving soldiers, but also, I mean, mechanical remnants littered the barbed wire shore. I want to know. The shore is littered with iron corpses, beached metal monstrosities already being hauled away for scrap. You spot a wrecked mechanigator, a rust-pitted thing with teeth as tall as you are, and an adamantium crab flipped over, his messy clockwork belly ripped to shreds. A technic squid lies, sta lies tangled. It had been a thing of deadly grace flying and teleporting around the battlefield, but the soldiers are used to fighting its ilk. They brought it down with nets and missiles. There are human corpses too, more of those than machines. Soldiers with stretchers walk amongst the carnage, searching for survivors. Reflection on mortality. Turn away, the last thing you see is medics trying to place a screaming soldier on their stretcher. He comes apart in their hands. I mean... Well, first of all, prospective passenger. This is interesting. You see, the thing is, I don't actually know what I should be doing at each and every port. I'm just sort of exploring, and I really like the City of Engines. I thought I would. I mean, I'm very much a person who appreciates technology and its applications, and while I am intrigued by the Poet Knights, but this is my kind of... This is my kind of city, let's be honest here. But yes, a prospective passenger. A hunched figure waves you down at the station. A glum ghoul asks for safe passage to Gossamer Smile. She'll pay you a hundred guineas on arrival. She draws her coat close as she steps aboard. She's trusting her life to a stranger. Perhaps not the best idea. I could actually take her captive as well. No, no, no. There will be none of that. But we will fill our empty mirror box with exotic memories. We lose one breathtaking spectacle, but we gain one box of exotic memories. You've commodified thought. Perfect. You wake from your surgery with a new penny-sized hole in your skull. When you heft the memory box back to your cargo, it actually seems heavier. Brilliant. Now let's do some shopping, though. Because, I mean, Clayton's Mill didn't have anything of use, but this place... This place is all about the technology, right? So, let's see what we got. Grubworth Traders. The City of Engines has all it could ever need, and its exports are useless. This shop is a token effort. Even the consortium has given up on trying to turn a profit here. Uh, nope, nothing particularly useful there. Hmm. Bilge Wish Bazaar. A hundred thousand miraculous gadgets buzz, spin, and fly amidst the chaos. Automatons and half-working services and flying engines touted on every corner. A wondrous device. A miracle of rare device. It will stop working outside the city's limits. Well then. Hmph. I say. Hmph, indeed. Well, I guess... Huh. I kind of expected to be able to upgrade my equipment here, but I suppose I have to return to the City of Keys for any of that. Perhaps that's what we do next episode, and perhaps we'll shatter this bizarre effigy. But for now, thank you for your time, and note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I shall see you all soon.